Hey guys, Books Nelson here. And as we round out towards the end of the year here in the 2K cycle, right? Uh, August is going to be the big ramp up for 2K25, and obviously the game is going to drop in September. So as we now head into June, it's time to start looking forward into things that we like in the game, things we, that we don't like in the game, in order to make sure that 2K25 um, fits what the players like and that the devs are clear. Now, obviously the devs are pretty close to, I don't want to say finished working on 2K25, but they're definitely wrapping up their work. So this kind of feedback isn't so much for the devs as it is for like to improve the game as it is for the next cycle, comparing what they do in 2K25 to what we like in 2K24. So for this particular video, one thing I'd like to talk about is the L2 cancel. So the L2 cancel is a somewhat controversial technique because since it is a cancel and since it doesn't seem to be totally intended by the developers, uh, it can be frowned upon by many members of the community. Now, some people will frown upon it simply because they can't do it because it is more difficult than your standard dribbling. And some people will frown upon it because they don't feel like it represents real life basketball. And some might frown upon it because they feel it's not an intended design, so it shouldn't be in the game. Now, addressing, the, addressing those points, let's start from the last point first. If it wasn't intended in the game, it shouldn't be in the game. This is actually not true. Happy accidents happen all the time as in video games and the most popular one, probably being combos in Street Fighter. Uh, combos were not originally intended to be in Street Fighter. I believe that was an oversight or a bug, but the players embraced the feature and it became the foundation of fighting games going forward, right? The other idea is that it's not realistic. Oh, and so it will actually, let's talk about it's hard to do. I actually think this is a good thing that it's hard to do because what it does is it gatekeeps the stronger dribbling moves behind a skill wall. So it's not something people are just going to get in the game and do. Let's take the reverse. Imagine if the most powerful moves in the game were simply done by mashing the X button while you were dribbling, right? You just go in and you and you say so you just tap right trigger you to hit turbo over and over. They do a whole bunch of fancy combos. Then every person who picks up the game is going to give you the immediate feedback of doing powerful moves to you. And this, again, I'll compare to Street Fighter in the form of execution. If you take Street Fighter, someone who's never played a fighting game before, and you say, hey, do Zangief's spinning pile driver, they're going to have a lot of difficulty with it until they get a hold of that control. And then even once they do have a hold of that control, there's a chance they might mess that up in gameplay, which adds balance, which again, if you're going to real life, which is the final point, real life has an execution cost, right? If shooting three pointers was as easy as shooting layups, we wouldn't be quite so wowed by Steph Curry, Caitlin Clark, and the great three-point shooters of our era. And you can say the same thing for moves across the board. So that having been said, I don't think those grounds are enough to say the L2 cancel should or should not be in the game. I think the L2 cancel, if I was going to say it should not be in the game, it would be for one thing and one thing only. It's an unfair move that can't be stopped. If it's an unfair move that can't be stopped, then it should be out the game. Any other reason, it's up for debate. I will say there's one more reason you can bring up with the L2 cancel, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I, I think it's fair, is that it doesn't look realistic, right? Now, I don't, I don't go with that just because until the entire game looks realistic, I don't think that's a fair criteria, to, criteria for what makes, what makes moves good or bad in the game. I think what makes moves good or bad in the game is if they're fun, if they're competitive, if there's counterplay, if they're effective, right? I think that's what makes moves good or bad. Everything else you work on over time, but the move shouldn't be ripped out on the basis of any other reasons. So here we have a scenario that I want to show the strength of the L2 cancel, and I think it's best form, right? So the worst form of the L2 cancel is probably when people are doing it back and forth, left and right, left and right. And this is just because the constant left-right movements is something we, we generally don't like in 2K. Setting people up one direction and tricking them, maybe going left, right twice, we're cool with. But once people start doing it 24 times for a possession, we start to feel like, okay, this is getting silly, right? Now we're moving back into double dribble. So let's look at this possession right here. So in the beginning of this possession, Boban, who is a card that cannot guard Dark Matter Michael Jordan, chooses to pick up Michael Jordan at half court. This is me versus the CPU in one of the challenge modes, right? 
is the final challenge. So this is an all-star difficulty. So Boban wants to pick up Michael Jordan. This is in, in basically a five out as we watch Larry Bird clearing out from the middle. This is an objectively terrible idea from Boban to pick up Michael Jordan in this situation. This is something he should not do. Now, here's the problem with 2K. In 2K, Michael Jordan does not have access to the ability to run past Boban, right? If you watch Boban, now obviously he's going to move a little better than a big man. Now, so you see right here, in real life, let's uh, switch cameras. In real life, once this happens, Boban is completely out of the play, right? He's completely out of the play. He's dead. Boban Morjanovic, I mean, really, Boban is dead as soon as he looks at Michael Jordan. But I think 60-year-old Michael Jordan is cooking Boban. But in real life, this right here is a terrible defensive position. But in 2K, he can get bumps off of that. Me knowing that, I retreat. Now, I understand there are some moves like physical handles and, and you know, you have blowout dribbles and you have releasing the controls to give you that blow by and that kind of thing. But the point is, in this particular matchup, you should not need any of those things to take advantage of all of this free space Michael Jordan has earned by existing while Boban made this terrible basketball decision to pick up Michael Jordan at the S of the Spurs logo, right? But let's watch the rest of this possession play out. Okay, so Boban picks Michael up. All right, Michael goes to set him up. Boban shuffling his feet. Okay, let's reset. So we're going to pull Bob Boban away and then L2 cancel and Boban is dead now. Now, if you'll look... This was the first time L2 cancel did something that should be happening in the game. Boban gets his momentum moving in the completely opposite direction. And then the L2 cancel hits and goes back the other way. Now, whether, no matter how you feel about the L2 cancel, I don't think, even visually, this move fits the criteria of past moves like the Stizo spins and this kind of stuff. I don't think this move fits in with those kinds of things. So I would say to the 2K developers and the 2K community, whether you're Sim, Arcade, Dribblehead, Competitive, I think the, the function of this move is good for the game. Because what this move said is you're slow, you're moving in one direction, right? My, you can see the speed advantage with Michael Jordan going one way, but Boban is fully committed, trying to negate this speed advantage with his full commitment. And that commitment gets punished with the L2 cancel, and now he is effectively cooked. Right now, and again, we, we even going into the stick dunks and stuff like that in 2K. If you go up with a regular layup right here, there's a chance Boban's going to get a 2P animation. But the stick dunk allows Michael Jordan to finish no matter what, because if Boban's not in front of him once this begins, he is effectively out of the play. I would say a good 19 out of 20 times. If you have high anchor, you can occasionally get a block or a favorable animation here. So. But breaking this down, uh, as we defend the L2 cancel and a little bit of the stick dunk, it's not to say that those things need to be in the game. But the function that those things do, that needs to be in the game, right? So if I'm going one way, I need a way to get back in the other direction. When I'm on a slasher as effective as Michael Jordan, I need to be able to punish my opponent for fully committing. And when I beat my opponent, and let's look at this uh, angle here, right? When I beat my opponent this badly, I need to be rewarded, and you see Blake Griffin here, with help defense. And this is a thing I want to talk about with 2K a little bit. We need, as a community, to not expect everyone to beat each other, I mean to guard each other one-on-one -on -one at a 100% win rate. That is not what defense in basketball looks like. Defense in basketball is a lowering of the effectiveness of the offense. So say a bad defender is going to get cooked maybe 9 out of 10 times, right? Um, a, an average defender is maybe going to get cooked by, I mean, we talk about by a great player. Uh, an average defender is going to get cooked by a great player maybe 7 or, or, or 6 times out of 10 at their, on a good day, right? They, they got 4 out of 10 stops on, a, on a, great off, a great offensive player. That's a big win for an average defender. A great defender is going to stop a great offensive player five to six times, maybe when they're really locking up seven times on their own. But the real goal of a good to great defender is to force you 
towards predictable help. Now you see here Boban, because he got cooked out of his big doofy shoes, this happens before Blake can really react. Like Blake, Blake reacts after the stick dunk input is in, right? But if Boban got contact right here, right? If Boban wasn't completely just in an absolute different video game, right? If he wasn't stuck in 2K23 at this very moment, Blake Griffin's help would have been in time reacting to Boban getting beat because Blake could stop right here and wait to see in waiting that passing lane to look at Larry, to look at Michael and make a decision. But because Boban is not affecting Michael's animation, even with Blake's AI super reactions, he's still cooked. The scenario, whether you like how it looks, whether you like how it occurred, whether you like stick dunking and L2 canceling, that stuff is less important than us getting these scenarios to play out properly because we don't want people like Boban stopping people like Michael Jordan. And this goes across the whole game. You don't want Shaquille O'Neal guarding Steph Curry. You don't want centers in the rec guarding guards in the rec out at the logo. If you're over here, you need to be absolutely cooked to the point where help defense needs to come in. And the real secret to great defense is a combination of resistance at the point of attack and then rotation after that resistance is broken. And if you don't get enough resistance, you get banged on. But if you get just a little resistance right here, if Boban was to just get a little bit of a body, a little bit of an arm on Michael Jordan, there's a chance to stop this play. And that chance is what brings us back to that, well, maybe he's not getting cooked 10 out of 10 times. Maybe now it's 9 or 8 or 7 out of 10 because he held Michael up enough for help defense to come over, and Michael now has to go into his decision making. And that's the thing. Like, as you guys, the playoffs are happening at the time of this video. We see Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic are just too good for solo defenders to be expected to do their jobs effectively, right? They're just too good. And that's the nature of basketball. Offense is better than defense in basketball. And that's why people, teams average 100 points a game, right? 105, 110 points a game. Every time you score, the defense was defeated. And the def defense gets defeated all the time, right? A minimum of, you know, 30 to 40 times a game in a 40 minute, 48 minute game, the defense loses, right? So the defense, we don't want a game that offense is too easy, but we want the reason that offense is mitigated to come from solid point of attack resistance forcing the offense into good decisions through rotation and help. And without tools like the L2 cancel and the stick dunk, even though those things aren't perfect, not saying those things are absolutely perfect, but without tools like this, what we're relying on is terrible defenders. And the truth of the matter is, if you get people who are really good at, two, at, at defense on 2K and their opponent doesn't know how to L2 cancel, doesn't know how to stick dunk, the game gets way less, the offense gets way less effective. The game gets way more bogged down in terms of scoring the ball. And I think there are tools in the game that help this besides these two things. But what offense needs to succeed is a, a pathway to maximum efficiency. And then the defense comes in and counters that, right? So one pathway to offensive efficiency, stick dunking. Another way, dribbling behind the screen and shooting a three. Another way, getting two on the ball right here and say kicking out to one of these players on the perimeter. Those are the things that offense wants to do. And that's perfectly okay because the defense says, okay, well, I'm going to take away one out of those two things and then make you make a decision on the third. And now what we have, and this is going to be a running theme as we continue to break down these ideas, now you have interactivity. That's what you want in a great game, a great head-to-head -head game. I don't even want to use the word competitive because I don't want that to be confused with comp. I mean, even if you're playing your friends, you want interactivity. You don't want, in, in fighting games, we have a saying, it's called a one-player game. And what we mean by a one-player game is basically a game that's not well-made. So once I hit you, you just have to watch me do combos. You just have to watch me lock you down in the corner, do setups with characters, and you just have to sit there and guard setup after setup after setup and keep guessing until either you lose or you miraculously escape. Generally, that's not considered a well-designed game. A well-designed game are points of interactivity where I did something and you countered that 
made me make a decision and then the back and forth of decision making mind games and then also the pressure of execution like this l2 cancel and to a lesser degree to stick dunk these things are what make an interactive and interesting head-to-head -head game that has a chance to reach the potential of the highest level in terms of representing the competition that's available in basketball. And so I say, whether you're a dribble head, whether you're a sim nation guy, the most sim thing in the world is good competition. And that should always come first, quality competition. And then we'll get it to look more realistic and feel more realistic as time goes on. But on the way there, we don't wanna have a non-competitive game that is either too cheesy with hyper, you know, exploitive dribble moves or, or shooting mechanics or too slow with offensive players that don't feel like they have a path to high efficiency options to punish the defense for terrible decisions like this one that began at the beginning of this possession. Any coach or fan of sim basketball should see this possession and be throwing their hat at the screen if you're rooting for the digital Spurs, watching Boban pick up Michael Jordan at half court without any help, without anybody on the nail, and a spread offense. And that is it for my defense of the L2 cancel and a minor defense of the stick dunk as well. Thanks so much, guys. Look for more of this kind of content in the future as we continue to break down what's great about 2K24, what's not great about 2K24, and what we hope to see in the entire 2K franchise going forward in the future. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. And if you have, thank you for your support. It's been unbelievable so far. See y'all in the next one. Peace.